Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. In this video, we're going to cover the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield 380EZ. Smith & Wesson introduced the Polymer Frame Military & Police, or M&P line, in 2005. It was essentially a hybrid evolution of their prior Sigma series, coupled with design elements from their SW99 series. The resulting M&P pistol was a striker-fired polymer frame pistol with stainless steel internal chassis coupled with a melanite-treated stainless steel slide and barrel assembly. It features a low bore axis height, which helps to reduce perceived recoil and muzzle rise, which aids in follow-up target acquisition. Non-continuous slide rails allows room for dirt and debris to escape to reduce the chance that dirt or grime can bind the slide. The striker has internal trigger safeties and is pre-tensioned when the slide resets, allowing for a shorter and lighter trigger pull. Smith & Wesson calls this action their striker fired double action only. However, in operation, it performs like a single action firearm. As demand for pistols that could be more easily concealed increased, the Shield line was developed and released in 2012. These featured a single stack magazine for a thinner profile, but was similar in almost all other aspects. In 2017, the line was refined with improvements made to the trigger system, as well as slight changes to the internal frame assembly with the M2.0 version. The Shield line met the demand for a thinner, more concealable firearm, However, for a variety of reasons, there are those who simply cannot operate a semi-automatic pistol as they don't have the hand strength needed to rack the slide or contend with the recoil of 9mm. Smaller caliber pistols are generally not the answer for this segment as smaller caliber also usually means smaller firearms which are even harder to manipulate. Smith & Wesson saw this demand and set about addressing it. They could have just used the existing shield and lowered the caliber down to 380, which would have helped address the issues, but they didn't do that. They redesigned the pistol to make every effort possible to decrease the spring tension and make it easier to use. They went back to a hammer-fired action, as the leveraging action of the slide on the hammer allows for less spring tension to overcome than a striker-fired assembly, and at the same time it allows the weight of the hammer to be included in the slide weight, allowing for an even lighter recoil spring to be used. The more weight and inertia that must be overcome, the less spring tension is required. The internal trigger safety developed for the striker-fired version could not be used with the hammer, so they incorporated a grip safety to allow for safe operation. The slide itself was slightly modified to increase the width of the rear of the slide to allow it to be more easily grasped, and this was hidden by the scalloped design of the gripping grooves themselves. Finally, they modified the magazines to make them easier to load. The resulting pistol, the EZ, was released in 2018. Today it's available in several cosmetic styles, and either with or without a thumb safety. Let's take a closer look. And of course, before working on any firearm, you want to make sure it is free and clear of any ammunition. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take the magazine out. Magazine is empty. Lock the slide back, and as we can see, the chamber area is free and clear. So we're safe to begin looking at the controls and features of the Easy Shield. So first of all, it is a single action trigger. So we have the trigger assembly here, it's single action. It is a hammer fired pistol. The hammer is internal in the slide there. Have the magazine release there. It works in typical fashion. You would simply push in on that and that would release the magazine. It is ambidextrous and able to be swapped around to the other side to make it uh, operable for right-handed use or it can be set up for left-handed. This is the safety right here. Safe is up, fire is down. It is ambidextrous as well, it's on both sides. This is the slide lock here, and on the last round it will hold open. The magazine follower will push up on that, and it will engage the slot right there in the slide to hold it open. To release it, you would simply pull down on it. Now that control is not ambidextrous, it is only on the one side. This firearm also has a grip safety right here. So in operation, as you're holding the gun, the grip will squeeze in on that to allow you to pull the trigger. It has a front undermounted Picatinny rail to mount a lighter laser. Uh, this uh, firearm also features a loaded chamber indicator right there. It's that little section right in the middle. And when there is a round in the chamber, that will lift up so we'll take a look here. This is a dummy round, so it's meant for training purposes like this. And go ahead and chamber it. 
and as you can see that lifts up indicating that the chamber has a round in it uh, it is visible and also tactile you can feel it of course when it's empty it's flat across the top so let's go ahead and take a look at the disassembly oh one more thing before we go farther forward it does have three dot sights two in the rear one in the front the rear is drift adjustable for windage so let's go ahead and take a look at disassembly first go ahead and remove the magazine it's always good safety practice make sure you are still empty and we'll go ahead and take a look at disassembly this is the disassembly latch right here this cut out in the slide you would need to pull that all the way back the slide all the way back till that aligns up with this and then that allows it to rotate down so pull it all the way back and then you can rotate that down like that and then the slide will simply come off the top so we'll take a look at the frame first of course we have our metal rails here it is a polymer frame metal rails on the front and the back for the slide to ride in this is our hammer right here that little section right there is our disconnector as the slide would go back it would disconnect the trigger from the hammer and that's what keeps it semi-automatic this is our ejector right here uh, make it where you can see it there right there and that rides in the slide and when the slide comes back that would physically be what pushes the shell up and out of the firearm to eject it this is as far as you'd really want to take any of this down uh, any alteration or damage to any of these components could make firearm either inoperable or unsafe or you know sometimes it can do both so you want to really not really do anything with that you just want to clean everything off give it a light coating of oil for lubrication and corrosion prevention and that's pretty much as far as you go with that on the slide we have our recoil spring right there and of course to remove you would just push forward slightly and lift up so forward and up and then that comes out it is captive recoil spring the barrel it achieves lockup with the actual shoulders in there so when it's in this position it's locked when the slide goes back on recoil it this little ramp there engages internally on the the frame on a pin and basically that causes it to the the pin pushes up and it pulls that down and that's what allows that to come back so anyway just go ahead and remove the barrel we're left here with the rest of the slide we have our yeah, get to where you can see it here have our extractor right there of course the firing pin comes out here the hammer hits that section right there this is as far as you really want to disassemble any of this uh, now I said that the sight was drift adjustable that little screw right there and it comes with an allen wrench that fits that in the box you would loosen that slightly to be able to make your adjustments so you would just want to barely loosen it that would allow you to drift it back and forth when it gets into the position where you like it then you would tighten it down and this is as far as you really want to disassemble any of this it can be disassembled further you have to drive that pin out to remove all of this assembly here and then that would also give you access into the firing pin that would release that so for the most part this is as far as you would really want to go reassembly is just the reverse so first put your barrel in make sure it's in the locked internal position the recoil spring it's got kind of a funky shape on the front so you can see that here it's like a football shape that engages into the football shape hole in the front of the slide so you would just put that in there it can't really go in any other way but correct so once that's in place then you would simply push forward go forward toward the front of the gun and push down until it goes into the saddle and show you that real quick the saddle is right here there's a little cutout so you just push forward and down and it goes down into that saddle so that's in place you would then align the rails here on the slide with the rails on the frame and you want to 
make sure you get them both in there. And when you're pulling this back, don't push up on that grip safety there. This section right here, when you push in on that, lifts up and that interfere with the slide being able to come down. So you'd want to slide it back. Make sure your ejector goes in the notch that's on the slide. Of course, everything's black, so you can't really see it. There's that notch right there. The ejector has to go into that notch. And once you have the section, the rear rails, then you would simply pull back. And once it's pulled back, you can flip that lever back around and it's reassembled. You want to function test it. Make sure it reconnects and you're reassembled. Now this firearm is called the Shield EZ. It's got several design features in it to make it operate easily and it's uh, meant to uh, be able to be operated by people that might have a little bit more limited hand and, and arm strength. So to that end, it is a mid-size firearm or more of a full-size firearm, for lack of a better way to put it. It is in 380 as opposed to 9mm. This firearm is the same size as the 9mm shield, however it is in 380 so it's a little bit lower power. What that allows is it's not a blowback operated firearm, it has full lockup on the barrel and between that lockup and the larger size, the slide is a little bit heavier, so that absorbs some more of the recoil. What that allows is lighter weight springs, or recoil spring, that makes it easier to pull the slide back. They've also had some design features in the slide itself. If you notice, it's got these decorative or scalloped ridges for gri uh, gripping. Uh, the rearmost one sticks out quite a bit farther, as you can see here, and that gives you something to easily grab a hold of. Go ahead and take the magazine out. And that allows you to easily grab a hold of it. Now, as far as the magazine itself also, it has uh, little sections that stick out on both sides that allow you to assist to pull down on the magazine follower as you're loading it, and that makes it a little bit easier to load. So between those features, and the fact it is hammer fired, that also that hammer being able to cock the hammer back and that hammer adds additional weight and inertia to there again all that additional weight and spring tension allows the springs itself, the recoil springs to be lighter weight and that all contributes to that lower weight as far as pulling the slide back. Uh, it is very easy to pull back and so it's able to be manipulated fairly easily. So there again, people with limited hand strength uh, should be able to, to handle it. Uh, At the range, I found the pistol easy to shoot. Recoil is very manageable, and the slide is definitely easier to manipulate than most comparable size pistols.
Accuracy was acceptable at self-defense ranges, and in the first several hundred rounds of shooting, we only encountered two failures. Both were failures to eject and occurred when my wife was shooting. Her smaller stature likely caused a limp wrist situation, however, I bring it up as she is actually the target market for this firearm. As this occurred within what I would call the break-in period of the pistol, and is probably user-induced, I'm not overly concerned, but I would recommend that anyone purchasing this firearm for defensive use have sufficient range time with it to ensure it's fully broken in and that they're comfortable with it. As we get more time behind this one, I'll provide an update if we do not see improvement or if it appears to be an issue with the firearm itself. I hope this information is of value to you, and if so, would ask that you hit the like button. Also, if you would wish to see more, make sure to hit the subscribe and notify buttons so that you don't miss anything. And, as always, until next time, stay safe.